Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Wellness Wheel Wednesday. My name is Dr. Vera Bazook and my clinic is Advanced Wellness Chiropractor and I'm a chiropractor and I have with me today and I'm super excited because this one's different. This is Tony Reed and he's from Mind Over Metal. So I'm pretty excited to introduce him in, in, in a little bit. But just remember if you don't have an opportunity to watch this video live, just hit save and you watch it a little later. And please remember to comment or can get involved and maybe you have some questions and we might be able to see those questions and answer them as we're doing this interview. So a little bit about why Wellness Wheel Wednesday exists is the fact that you know people have aches and pains um, and sometimes we're really hunting for an, uh, where and why do I still have this ache and pain. So as a chiropractor that's mostly I'd say 90 Five, 99% of the time when people come to a chiropractor, it's because they have some ache and pain and they really want to get rid of it. Um, rarely do people come for, hey, I'm doing pretty good, can I do even better? Although that is the next evolution of chiropractic is how to maintain wellness. So when we're doing a thorough history, there's, um, you know, we're talking about the pain, just making sure that we have an understanding of it, but what is really causing it? When we have these repeated stressors in our life, um, that could be a problem. So many people will think that they're doing something. So physically, they're either sleeping wrong, sitting wrong, bending wrong, something physical that they're doing wrong. And that is a contributor, you know, when you're sitting at a desk and you have this posture for eight hours, that contributes. But is it the only thing? I don't think so, especially if the pain is recurring or if it's of a chronic nature. Then I start to begin to think that, hey, something else is involved. It might be something chemically, poor lifestyle choices, bad diet, smoking, drinking, drugs, or it could be emotional. And the emotions are the are really big sucker punches, especially if we can't process these emotions. It's not that they're bad, it's just how we express and actually deal with these emotions. Many of us don't have the tools. So our emotional health is, um, is, is very important, but it also, these strong emotions can be coming from different areas of our life. How we feel about our finances, how we feel about our jobs, how we feel about our family life and all these kinds of things. So I'm very excited because Tony here is again the, Tony Reed from Mind Over Metal, but he is representing the, the mental part of the wellness wheel. And I'm excited because mental is, is a little bit of a tricky field. What, um, to me, what mental is, is a little bit of that growing your mind. So if you're not learning something and not getting engaged with life and exploring things, you're shrinking and that's no way to live. But also, Tony has a different, he has that part of in it, but he has a different part for the mental. So, Tony, mind over metal. It has something to do with metal bending. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me a little bit more about that and how that actually works and, and how it fits into the wellness wheel and what we were talking about. Sure, so uh, first, thanks for having me today. Appreciate that. Uh, steel bending is a, an old time feat of strength and was popularized in traveling circuses late 1800s, early 1900s. So this is something that's super old that uh, has kind of survived through the decades through a, a, a small, you know, inside group of people who've kept this alive and, yeah. and those people have become my mentors. So, so what it is, is you're bending, you know, construction grade steel uh, without heat or tools. So I wear gloves to protect my hands because, as I say in my performances, bruises okay, blood not okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I protect my hands, the and then uh, and, and then I'll bend anything from uh, construction grade bolts up to uh, heavy pieces of flat bar, rebar, that sort of stuff. Uh, and I bend it without use of heat tools, jigs, or, or anything of that sort. So I bend everything off my legs, uh, off the floor, or between my hands. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, how long does it? Um well, tell me, how did you get? How did you get into this? So, why why did you get into metal bending? Um, for me, I, I herniated a disc in my back in mm, those uh, are painful. April of 2015. Uh, major herniation, and at that point, uh, I really couldn't do much of anything. It yeah. was it was moving yeah. super slow. Everything was excruciatingly painful, yeah. and my entire training regime at the time was essentially cut off. And I was going squirrely, sitting around not doing anything. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, I can train my grip strength because that's the only thing that I can do right now that isn't giving me more pain. 
So I went through social media and Instagram and Facebook until I found a video of a guy bending uh, what's called a grade eight bolt, and he like he bent it with his hands. And I looked at it and I said, <laughs> I want to do that. Yeah. Like that's exactly yeah. what I want to yeah. learn how to do. So I started asking questions. How can I learn from this person, this person, until I, I started to get similar names until I, I landed on a guy named Chris Ryder. Yeah. And Chris is the Coney Island strongman. Um, he's, uh, you know, in terms of the amount of things that he's capable of doing, he's probably, uh, I would say, arguably the best, you know, strongman in the world in the performance side of things for sure. Wow. And, uh, and I ended up hiring him as a coach and uh, he taught me how to tear phone books in half, how to rip decks of cards in half, how to bend bolts, twist horseshoes, drive nails by hand, all these old performing feats that these you know, traditional strongmen would do in, in circus shows and, and performances live. Uh, I learned these, these techniques. And, and what I realized very quickly when I started was that so much of this was about your state of mind. Yeah. Uh, when I do a, a, a performance for, for when I do them, or if somebody sees me uh, creating artwork with, without using these heater tools, they think, wow, that must be a great way to relieve, you know, the, to relieve yourself of stress and, and just put yeah. all your anger into it. And the reality is that these techniques require an incredible amount of focus, mm. and it's not just about putting your rage into it. Right. So um, for me, it, it became a... The opposite, actually. A, it, yeah. it became a, a really interesting way for me to ground myself, and it became, in a way, meditative. So that's where, um, for me, I really started to, to hang on to the feats and have them become part of my routine because I found myself with more patience, I was sleeping better, um, general mood improved, and a lot of this came down to the state of mind that I had to put myself into in order to achieve this sort of result at the end of steel bending. So tell me maybe a little bit more about that, because I'm sure when somebody is looking at a, a phone book or a deck of cards, yeah, you can rip one in half, but it's certainly not a whole book. So how did you, well, what is part of the process to, to get to that point of ripping that um, book in half and then the card and then have you used that skill set to other aspects in your life like how did that look like for you so for me the first time I tried to tear a phone book I didn't listen to the instructions I thought I'm just <laughs> gonna try and do this <laughs> on my own uh -huh. and uh, and I fought and the the tear line was really ugly and it was just like a, it looked like a dog had tearing this thing apart by the time I was finished and it was yeah. I was I felt accomplished though, even though it was, yeah. I looked at it, I'm like, this is shameful. That's not how that's supposed to look. <laughs> I still felt really like, proud. happy and yeah. proud of myself that I was like, I yeah, I, it I did it, right? <laughs> and, and for me, that's become the most gratifying part. I've taught dozens and dozens of people how to tear phone books. That's one of the things that I, the trick has gone from tearing the phone book to teaching people how to do it. Yeah. That's become the party trick for yeah. lack of a better term. And for me, the, seeing the look on somebody's face the first time they tear their first book is that's the best feeling that's better than anything that i can teach people right. it's it's like the the first high that's that's you know yeah. you're chasing after that yeah. and for me what it is it's watching them struggle and i allow them to struggle i don't jump in and say no no do this no 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 do this yeah they need to understand that if if you're not in the right headspace you don't listen to the instructions um you don't follow the guidance that's given to you yeah things are going to be way harder so for me there's this profound lesson that comes behind a feat of strength where when your stress is under control, when you listen to the guidance, when you don't talk yourself down, you can achieve all this crazy stuff. Yeah. And once you do, it puts you on a whole different level of, wait, my perspective is now different. What yeah. else have I been telling myself that I'm not able to do, mm -hmm. that I'm actually capable of doing, but I'm too scared to actually go and do it? So do you, do you find yourself, um, as you're tearing it or as you're, as you're bending something and you come into a, a junction, like now as you're doing it, I'm sure, you know, there's hard, 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 and then it becomes, oh, that's easy. Mm -hmm. So what in those, if you mind, what are one of those things that you say to yourself when it's like you, you get into the point where I don't think this is going to actually bend today, I don't think this is going to work. How do you... What's that mantra or what's that one thing that you repeatedly say to yourself that, yeah, I can look at everything else that I've done. I can do this too. It, it's interesting. It, it, depending on the feet, there are, there are different kind of things that will run through my head. But ultimately, my goal, whatever I need to say to myself at the time, is actually about um, an absence of thought. So for me, yeah. uh, I'm a very busy person. I, yeah. I haven't held less than three jobs since I was 15. Wow. No matter what, I just, I'm compulsively busy. Yeah. And for me, my brain is also running on high revs all yeah. the time. So for me, I get much more benefit out of forcing myself to slow down 
and just focus on the one thing. And I think for a lot of people, that's the, one of the hardest things that we have. We create yeah. so much frustration because if we have one task in front of us and it's only going to take 30 seconds, but the phone rings or somebody says something yeah. or you hear a door slam, instantly our attention's all over the place and we're like goldfish, yeah, yeah, right? Like yeah. a five-year-old. It's, yeah, you, you, you can't even talk to them and <laughs> five-year-old's looking all over the place, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so we never, I think for a lot of us, we struggle with that, that focus. And for me, if I can say, just let that go. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Huh. And like it's, it, it's letting go of all of the stuff that isn't actually in front of me. So as opposed to saying, you can do it, push harder, push harder, push harder. I don't need another screaming coach in my head. I've had a lot of screaming coaches in my athletic career. um, And and that's out of emotion. That's not because that's the most effective way. Mm -hmm. I know what I need to do, and I actually just focus on feeling it. So if I'm bending like a a big piece of of steel, I'm going to pull, and I'm going to say, I am now going to feel this thing start to move. And and I get actually excited with every millimeter that thing starts to move. I'm like, yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. And then it goes. So you end up kind of creating your own hype, but you have to be the only element in that mindset. You can't have all the other things like what happens if I fail? Why is this so frustrating? All of this sort of stuff. There's no room for that sort of thing. If you're going to do something that challenging, it requires real focus. Wow. So then... Um Go back to that feeling statement because that I think becomes really important. Is your uh, so is it almost that you're feeling the success before it actually bends? I think there's a big part of that. Um, for me, so much of it has been about the prep before I actually do the bend. Yeah. And and so all of the like self you're coaching. There, you're already there, and you yeah. Yeah, like I've already been, essentially. If I'm going to take, let's say, I'm going to take a, a, a six inch spike and I'm going to bend it under my chin. Um, I'll have the wraps around the end of it and I'll stare at it for 10 seconds. Now, in a show, this creates suspense and it's great for showmanship, but the reality is, is I'm looking at it and I'm going longer exhale than inhale and I've already seen myself bend this thing three or four Mm -hmm. times Mm -hmm. and then I execute exactly Mm -hmm. what I've thought about. So, has there been a project or as you were learning this and applying it, was there um, anything that you kind of just like got super frustrated with and just left it behind and then mm. the amount of times that I have thrown things <laughs> doing this especially in my first year it's uh, I can a laugh about it now room. I can laugh about room. it now because in the first year I did not want to talk about that at all it was like no of course I don't get upset haha yeah. <laughs> I just have this perfect mindset yeah, yeah, yeah. the reality is the amount of times that I've spiked things on the ground because I'm just like <laughs> are you kidding me yeah and really what it is 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 that's where the lesson came from for me huh. I mean if I'm bending easy material I don't get a whole bunch out of doing things that are easy the mm-hmm. whole draw to this for me is not that it's so unusual because no one else does it for me it provides a unique challenge that I haven't had anywhere else where I know I'm capable of it but it still challenges me at about 90% every time Yeah. so for me it's saying you know if you're in the perfect state, you're going to get it. But if you're not, you better fix what's not right. Hmm. And that, for me, has been the transferable skill from what this is into my work life, into my home life, into my social life. Yeah. Where I look at this and I'm like, okay, I, I know how to do this. I've yeah. done this a hundred times. What is wrong with today? There's nothing out to get me. There's no paranormal uh, energy that's stopping me from doing this. Yeah. The reality is I'm either distracted, I'm malnourished, I'm not rested enough, right. or I'm stressed. So you just, um, that was going to be my next question is how you, how do you trans, have you seen how it's blossomed your life that you, it's a transferable skill. So yes, you're bending metal and it's uh, becoming beautiful art. So you're growing your mind that way and you're kind of um, training. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're literally just training yourself to deal with, um, I I, want to call it adversities, but not. It's just, um, you know, natural life hiccups that. Yes mountains out of molehills that yep. you must see people make. Absolutely. Yeah. So for me, when I look at something, I mean, uh, to, to, to bring it to a current state, when I'm making, let's say I'm making a wine rack and I, I have made essentially what I want to make out of a 20 foot bar, I'll, I'll bend this thing into something that's, you know, about 12 inch by 12 inch, yeah. but it won't sit level, which is the most frustrating part mm-hmm. of, of doing the, the work that I do is that if I had tooling, I would just take a pry bar and then, mm-hmm. oh good, it's level and we're done. <laughs> Um, But for me, it's not so simple. So that becomes the frustrating part. And I look at this and I'm like, no matter how many pieces I've made, I'm going to be frustrated at some point. So is it better for me to deal with this now or deal with it later? Yeah. So what do you do? So uh, for me, honestly, it's take a five minute break. Yeah. Um, Yeah. and, And I actually go physically away from it. 
physically mm -hmm. outside. Yeah. And there's something about changing your environment where you are not staring at the problem anymore. Yeah. Where it allows, whether it's your subconscious that, that sobers up or whether it's your emotional state where you're like, I really just needed a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Um, we create these kind of cages for ourselves by obsessing over a problem mm -hmm. when the majority of us kind of wake up with solutions in the morning or after a nap or, yeah. or after a drive. Yeah. Uh, walking meditation is, is something that, that has worked for me in the past because sitting still cross-legged I get a little bit antsy yeah so sometimes a change of scenery is all it takes and for me it doesn't take very long it's about five minutes and then I come back I'm like oh I just have to do this that's right and then I do the thing I've heard of that that it like a dramatic um like but an extreme removal so going outside so if you're inside going outside so that is almost like this massive shock to the system so it's completely different mm -hmm. but um what did I want to ask you I wanted to so now that you've kind of let go of mm -hmm. some of maybe those anxious thoughts or maybe um, let's just call them negative thoughts for the lack for simplicity. Sure. So since you've let some of that go, have you noticed any um, creative flow or what else has come to fill that space in your brain? So do you see that with people that you work with that once they've let something go, something more wonderful comes into their life? I think the, the most exciting thing for me after like the I run maybe one workshop a year. It's mm -hmm. not very often, but when I do, I look forward to uh, hearing the stories that come later. And yeah. it's it's rarely, I mean, there, there's the obvious story where someone's like, I went home, tore a phone book in front of my family, I'm a champion, thank you so much. Those are awesome. Uh, for me, the, the best story that I've had from a workshop was somebody who said, look, I, I was dealing with postpartum and yeah. Uh, oh. I, I had a really hard time identifying where my value was. I'd been out of the workforce yeah. for almost two years. Yeah. Um, I didn't really have much for self-worth. And when you showed me that I'm, I'm strong and I'm capable and I can be positive for myself, it reminded me that I'm in control of my situation. Yeah. And for me, that's more valuable than any yeah. amount of, of physical performance that somebody might do. Uh, I, I like the conversation around the steel bending pieces because I tell them, look, no, this is not about putting rage into something and, and trying to, to make the best of it. Yeah. Um, it's not about trying to put as many bends into it as possible mm -hmm. as you've touched on before. It's creativity, but more importantly, it's saying I'm 100% responsible for the outcome here. Yeah. And, and seeing somebody understand that they can do something that's physically uncomfortable, mentally uncomfortable because you feel like there's people yeah. watching and you're failing. Yeah. Um, or if even if you're by yourself, I'm like, I'm a complete failure. Yeah. For you to identify that that's the problem and then say, no, I'm in charge right. of this. Like, yeah. I, it, there's nothing more frustrating, honestly, than, than flipping through social media and seeing all the people that are like, oh, can't sleep. Oh, life's so hard. Oh, my bad luck. And it's yeah. like, you don't have bad luck. You have a bad attitude. Um, there's, there are unfortunate things that happen to us, but whether it happens, uh, you know, to you and it's, it's fortunate or unfortunate, that's real, but how you deal with it is right. really whether, that's, um, whether that changes you, right? So I, I, for me, when I hear people that, that are saying, oh, well, that's just my luck, this is what happens to me, I'm like, you've given up. Yeah. If you take no ownership in, in your situation, then yeah, you yeah. don't get to complain because you chose this, man. I, um, I remember once at a networking meeting, it was, uh, the question was posed, what's your definition of success? And that's, um, my definition of success is, is standing up after you've fallen down. Mm -hmm. It's to stand up. I don't. It's sometimes really hard, mm -hmm. wobbly for a bit. But yeah. So I think you're speaking to the same thing. It's totally. Like, it's um. Just get up. Well, try again. We can't adapt without discomfort. Right. And the fact that right. that we're we're somehow we've sold ourselves this this bill of goods that uh, if if I do this just the right if I do everything the right way nothing will be uncomfortable. That's BS. I'm sorry, but it's that's not how it goes. It's you don't adapt unless you're unless you're uncomfortable. You don't adapt unless things are hard. And if you don't have a reference point to show you how big the spectrum is, you don't really know what's bad and what's yeah. not. Yeah. You know what's not bad. So when people say this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do, I'm like, what do you mean? What's yeah. you, you're telling me? You've never done anything harder than this ever? Because if that's the case, you have huge gains here. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't, then you're being dramatic. So right. what is it? Yeah, perfect. That's a great way to kind of tie this all back because chiropractic really is a, that's that's how we define health is how adaptable are you to your circumstances mm -hmm. so it is about regaining that balance and um, making sure that you don't get stuck as what you're saying in in these repeated thoughts but also stuck in the way that you're in a stress response that your body is operating as this everything is stressful and to regain a little bit of that balance so you can ebb and flow through life and that sounds like it's totally what you're saying as well 
This was great. I, this was a good talk. Thanks. Um, but uh, we are running down to the end here. So if there's, I think Tony might have, uh, do you sell your art? Yes. Or, so he, he does sell. So if you're interested in learning maybe a little bit or having one of his art pieces in your home, I think you can probably check out his Mind Over, Mind Over Metal Facebook page. I think we've tagged it in this uh, video. Yep feel free to check that out and I'm pretty sure you can private message him as well if you had some other questions or yep. um, and actually the so the website is mindovermetal.ca and then uh, the Instagram tag is mindovermetalart and then that's where the most recent stuff goes up uh, every week there perfect it sounds super beautiful so just remember to tune in next week we have Teresa Stanley and she is with us and she's going to be talking a lot about well, I think similar things so look forward to chatting with Teresa next week and thank you Tony that You're was very welcome. really great that was a great talk okay bye guys